professor. She works at the Knowledge Discovery and Data Mining Lab at the Universidad de Pisa. She has been working most of the time in privacy and the risk of using AI models, or AI based learning models or machine learning models, and uh, using all kinds of technologies going from big data analytics, decision making systems, machine learning studies of privacy, and uh, ethical issues, right? Um, uh, I just learned that she she's also in charge of all the master education at the University of Pisa. I've been reading her papers and I, I watch or, or hear part of the presentations. And I believe that for the group in uh, Supercomputing Center and also at the UPC, that will be very interesting. So uh, enjoy the, the talk and thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So uh, thank you for the introduction. So um, I, part of this lab, uh, I, I want to do only uh, clarification. The KDD lab is a lab uh, involving more institutions in PISA, not only the University of PISA, but also uh, Scuola Normale Superiore and uh, CNR. And uh, uh, so then the work that I present here is a joint work between the three institutions. And uh, uh, so in this talk, I will uh, talk about uh, how we can uh, use machine learning in order to exploring the privacy risk uh, uh, in machine learning, okay? So um, so we, we I, I would like to start from these, uh, let me say, slides, because uh, when we talk about AI or any kind of uh, uh, system, intelligent system, uh, we start from the data. So uh, in this way, we are referring uh, uh, intelligent system that learn from data of some pattern, and then based on this pattern, uh, learn some uh, methods that support a decision uh, for um, for uh, people, uh, expert like uh, doctors or uh, uh, other uh, experts that uh, can gain uh, some advantage from uh, uh, the use of this system. So, sorry, no, it's okay. You will, you will. Okay, again. So, um, which is the problem that uh, clearly uh, we can, uh, let me say, uh, use uh, every tool, uh, data mining, machine learning, uh, AI tool for discovering patterns, okay? But uh, uh, we are also taking into consideration the fact that uh, uh, sometimes, most of the time, data that we uh, use for training this model for understanding pattern are uh, produced by people, okay? And describe a lot of uh, uh, characteristics of the uh, daily life of these people. So when we uh, apply these, when we learn this uh, method, but also when we apply this method for uh, prediction, for the understanding, uh, we should take into consideration also the ethical issues, okay? Where privacy is one of the ethical issues ethical and legal issue that we should take into, into consideration. Uh, so uh, we uh, typically, uh, the approach that we uh, use in order to address this kind of problem is to look at uh, the legal framework or the work done by philosopher or by uh, legal expert uh, that identify some possible challenges that we have in using these, uh, uh, let me say, these, uh, uh, these models in the real life application uh, in order to understand if there is a way for supporting the auditing of these uh, system and uh, the support of this auditing uh, is useful in many contexts because we have uh, legal experts that need to, to audit these uh, uh, models in order to check for example if some law uh, if these models are compliant with the uh, uh, with the uh, rules that we have but however uh, when we talk about the privacy uh, we are uh, we have also especially in europe some laws that already uh, implement these norm ethical norms in uh, ethical principle in norms but uh, sometimes in the system you can have some ethical issues that are not regulated and uh, also the research in computer science can help also in understanding uh, 
uh, how we can approach from the legal framework point of view also this kind of problem. So it's a cycle between a technical stuff about the legal stuff. So we learn from legal uh, point of view, what we can do technically for supporting uh, the, uh, let me say, uh, compliance of this system, but we also can suggest some, uh, uh, let me say, uh, procedure also uh, for improving, for example, the laws that you, we already have. So these uh, are the guidelines uh, that uh, was published in the 2019 from the uh, high-level expert group that identified the which are the character which should be uh, the uh, characteristic of a transport AI that should be user uh, user centric human centric it should be lawful uh, ethical and robust okay so uh, lawful because there are already some laws to be uh, respected ethical because there are some uh, ethical issues that are not uh, a hard rule okay and and then there is uh, the part related to the robustness because we should have reliable uh, system and so in order to prevent some uh, um, arms uh, unexpected arms okay so they identified some uh, some requirements and among the requirements there is a uh, oh there is these requirements of uh, privacy okay uh, in in our lab we work also on transparency and also on fairness but you can see that for example among this, uh, these these uh, uh, these uh, requirements there is uh, uh, societal environment uh, environmental well-being because another problem is the impact of learning AI system as on the environment okay from the old psychological point of view okay so what about privacy clearly uh, we have uh, these uh, rule that is a legal framework in Europe that is the general data protection regulation that uh, uh, is uh, the regulation uh, after the directive that we had in uh, Europe. And the, in this regulation uh, was also introduced the, the right to explanation that is connected to privacy. And then we will see how, because uh, uh, most of the time in order to explain machine learning model, we need to add uh, an additional step to the knowledge discovery process. And this additional step uh, typically is based on uh, some, uh, let me say, uh, some models that sometimes could give uh, some contrast with privacy because with privacy you want to protect the individual privacy, the rights of privacy of individuals. So with transparency, you want to make clear what the model does. And so you can have some contrast between different ethical uh, issues. So while in the law, it is required to maintain both. So from the technical point of view, we should work in order to have a trustworthy AI that uh, is able to balance uh, also privacy and transparency. Also in the case, we have this additional uh, step of pre-processing processing on the data and on the model that is the explainable AI. So uh, what about privacy? So when we talk about privacy, it uh, means that we need to consider these personal data because there is no problem with privacy if our process is not applicable on personal data, okay? If uh, you are managing data related to logs of machine, there, there is no privacy issues. There will be maybe some uh, secrecy issues, for example, because uh, uh, the company, by uh, learning some pattern from the data, can, uh, uh, by uh, attacking uh, the system, uh, can discover some important competitive pattern from this data, but this is not privacy. Okay, so it's another uh, story. So when we talk about personal data, we, we talk about any information related to identity of a person. Okay, so your name, your address, uh, uh, if you have some uh, big details. So which is the problem? The problem is that we can uh, elaborate personal data, but we need to pay attention because there are some categories of data that are uh, in the previous directory uh, was uh, called the sensitive data. Now there is this uh, special category uh, word, a term that was included in the GDPR that should be protected 
uh, really protected that are racial and ethical origin or for example religious or philosophical uh, belief or especially the medical data so should be protected so this means that i should avoid re-identification of people and uh, the possibility that someone that doesn't have any rights to do the link between the person and these uh, special category of data can do this okay so uh and uh, in fact typically uh, what the law say is that okay uh, if you are able to guarantee uh anonymity so once you transform data model or what you want and the, the probability of success in producing the link between special categories and personal data so special category data so in case this probability is very low so means that the data is anonymous and so the law is not applicable so our goal in order to avoid uh so these uh, legal problems we should make the system uh privacy protected okay so in case you have this uh, uh property so means that the law is not uh, uh is, is not necessary to uh to apply the rules indicating in the gdpr gdpr so uh the uh, law also introduced this uh principle introduced so uh, the principle of privacy by design was introduced by Jan Kavokian in 90 uh, years. And then uh, they, uh, the, the Europe with the GDPR uh, included uh, this principle also in our legal framework. But uh, the principle is very simple. The idea is that uh, to have a proactive approach to privacy instead of to have a reactive approach. So the idea is that when we design an information system, we should take into consideration which are the privacy uh, requirements in a way that uh, still until the start, we uh, we are able to manage the privacy, uh, the privacy issues. So uh, clearly what means implementing this principle? Because the principle of privacy by design is a general principle. You need to consider these privacy requirements in any system. The system could be also the analytical system. For example, our process of discovering patterns from the data is a system, information system. Do you think about your because I first I needed to go to the first slide? No, no. no. Really, really ah, okay. It's blocked uh, to the first one. But why? No? Okay. If I go back, you will, you see the change? No? Why? If I change, no? Yeah. I can do it this way. Okay. So I try to increase the sides. Okay. See. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So, which is uh, uh, thank you. Uh, so, which is the idea of privacy by design? What should be implemented in uh, in these, uh, let me say, data driven analysis that lead from data to the hand a uh, given model that is able to predict, understand phenom societal phenomena. What you want is to have a two different. Um, elements in the system so the privacy risk assessment why because i need to understand if there is a private risk, a risk for people representing the data or in the model and then when there is a problem i needed to act for applying one of the uh, privacy protection methodology if there is no problem i can develop the system without uh, uh, applying any additional process but uh, if there is a possible problem we need to act for correcting the uh, the system in that sense in order to 
um, let me say, to uh, guarantee some properties and the data for the privacy protection. So uh, in the lab, for example, uh, we developed this, uh, this um, system that is called Prudence. This is for big data analytics. Anytime you want to develop a system that is based on data, any analytical tool, a data-driven analytical tool, you need some data. So data that should be suitable for the developing of this uh, system. So, and the idea is that Prudence is a tool that a company or an entity having the data can use in order to check, which is the select the uh, data useful for developing the system, check which is the status of privacy protection by uh, simulating uh, some attacks, okay, for example, red identification attacks or what you want on the data. And then once you identify which are the portion of data that could lead to particular risk, so we can apply what is called here privacy mitigation strategy that is useful for mitigating the privacy risk that you highlighted by balancing the data utility for the services and the um, protection for users. Okay, so uh, it's a way for, uh, let me say, uh, checking the status and uh, share the data only when you find the setting and the data, the transformation of the data that is useful for reaching this uh, good trade-off. So uh, one of the methods that uh, we apply uh, for uh, computing, because uh, we need some quantification of the risk, okay? So this is uh, one of the examples that you can uh, apply. So apply a method for uh, analyzing, which is the risk of identification. The risk of identification is not a new concept, but was introduced uh, uh, in uh, 2002 uh, by uh, uh, Latanya Zwini, but also uh, together with uh, Pierangela Samarati, there, are, there is another paper that uh, uh, implements uh, as the idea that I described when I started with the presentation. So avoid measure, which is the probability of the link between the special categories and the identity of people. And they, for example, uh, uh, proved that uh, in a, they identified, because sometimes the first approach is say, okay, this data is anonymous because there is no information about uh, uh, personal information, about name, surname, uh, a social security number, so it's anonymous. No, this is they identified data or how the law say pseudonymized data. That could be useful for research, but in case you needed to develop a system, it is necessary that your, da your data are anonymous. So means that if I apply an attacker like this one, so you should prove by quantifying the risk that the risk is very low. The probability of success of this attack is very low. So this means that, for example, in this data set that was released uh, containing information about uh, people records, healthcare records of people, uh, inside there was uh, uh, the information about the governor or uh, of Massachusetts. And they proved that uh, by, without looking at uh, Mm, social security number without looking at the uh, names of people in the in the table, they was they able to identify the governor with the 100 percent of probability. So this covered, for example, which is the disease uh, of uh, the governor. Okay, because there they uh, link it together public information uh, coming from the voter list uh, together with the medical data that uh, they had available and that the only person that was uh, with the same birth date of the governor that was a man and uh, with the same zip code of the governor was only one so there it is necessary to develop some uh, strategy for producing this kind of analysis in a way that before sharing this data you can check which is the uh, balancing between quantification of the risk and quantification of data quality. So uh, you can select for doing the analysis, the, uh, le let me say configuration by generalization. For example, if you are in a setting where data are uh, uh, mobility data, you can apply some, from the geographical very precise position, you can apply some generalization of time generalization, spatial generalization, for reducing this probability of risk, okay? And in this way, you can apply different kind of generalization given 
a specific generalization. This produces a different combination, a different distribution of the risk in the data, and so and a different quality of the service that you want to uh, develop. So this is a, a way for doing that, which is the problem that for producing this data catalog that have a different um, generalization with different protection, a different data quality, it is necessary to try different combination and for any different combination, producing, simulating the attacks, okay, with different background knowledge from the, um, uh, oh my God, from the attacker that we uh, want to take into consideration. So most of the time is time consuming. So uh, we also exploited these, uh, the work done with prudence, prudence in order to use uh, a predictive model. And the predictive model uh, work on the data labeled with the risk in a way that the model that uh, learn which are the patterns from data and the risk. And so we can exploit machine learning for predicting the privacy risk. So this is the difference. Prudence perform a systematic analysis, consider all the possible background knowledge, all the possible combination, and the, uh, the work is exhaustive. But we, in this case, with experts, what we did is to learn which are the patterns that are really correlated with the uh, privacy risk that we computed with, uh, ex uh, with the prudence in a way that when a new record arrives, we uh, query the model and the model produce uh, with a given probability, which is the privacy risk of this kind of trajectories, for example. Uh, so what we add is that uh, by analyzing, so let me uh, do here, by uh, after predicting the, the, the risk for a given user, uh, what we discovered is that uh, since the, this is uh, an unbalanced, uh, data sets uh, typically because you have or a high number of uh, risk users, a low number of risk users, or you have on the contrary, depending on the context where we are working on. Okay. And so most of the models that uh, are useful and uh, that are very powerful in this context are complex uh, uh, models like, for example, ensemble methods, okay, that works very well, having a very good performance. And so in this case, since the idea was to develop also um, a system that uh, support not only um, companies that uh, can understand what uh, which, is, which is the situation for the data to be shared, but we would like also to produce a um, framework for users in order to understand if sharing, for example, a given data, they can check which is the expected risk for this uh, sharing. And uh, so in this case, uh, it is necessary not only to understand uh, to understand if share, by sharing this data, you are at risk, but it will be nice to understand what is the portion of this data that lead to this uh, high risk, for example. So for this reason, we um, uh, introduced also this uh, additional component that is uh, this risk explanation model that implements some uh, algorithm for explainability for producing this uh, understanding for the different users. Uh, so we, um, this is the workflow that uh, I explained. So uh, we work at the, especially in uh, mobility data because uh, we work a lot uh, in this kind of data uh, because uh, having this uh, temp temporary spatial feature together, sometimes for the privacy, they are very problematic. And so uh, we uh, had to uh, apply the two, two different setting. One was uh, to extract mobility profiles. So having, uh, for example, uh, some features describing the mobility behavior of user. Some are individual behavior, other are collective behavior. And then we use it like uh, random forest or other uh, deep forest or other ensemble methods that are able to predict. And then we use it for the explanation well-known uh, approaches of explainability that work on uh, uh, this kind of uh, uh, features that are sharp, lime, and lore that are uh, that is logic-oriented uh, uh, approach. 
we have also, um, uh, let me say, um, um, a method, uh, an implementation of this context that uh, uh, instead of extracting this mobility profile, we apply directly uh, the, uh, the predictive model on the raw data that are trajectories. So in this case, you have sequences of position and time. And uh, clearly, when the data change, the prediction model change, because in that case, we need to use LSTM or rockets that are suitable for sequential data. Clearly, also the explanation method change. So you have to think about this framework like modular, that depending on the data that you have and depending on the data format algorithm, machine learning algorithm that you have, you can apply your explanation model, your explanation algorithm, sorry, that is suitable for that context. Okay. So um, clearly, once we discovered this, we have a set of, uh, let me say, protection techniques that in the literature can be applied. Some are based on uh, anonymity, and uh, there you can find all the methods based uh, derived for key anonymity, the closeness, or uh, uh, L diversity are variants of this kind uh, uh, of approach. Typically, they are based on the notion that you can generalize data in order to create groups that are very similar and indistinguishable. And then you can learn the models on top of these uh, methods. Then there are some randomization based approach where the most famous is differential privacy. And that could be applied uh, in, on the data, but also on the machine learning model. OK. So uh, concerning uh, uh, differential privacy, so uh, we are uh, in a situation, differential privacy is a model, mathematical model that is very strong for privacy protection, and uh, which is the idea. The, the idea is very simple. So you have a database. Uh, so you have a very a closed database where the difference between the two databases is only one record. That is the record that you want to check if it is protected or not. And so the idea is that you want to implement a method, data transformation method, in a way that you are not able to distinguish the situation where the user is or not within the database. If you are not able by querying the database uh, to distinguish the two situations, so the protection is guaranteed. OK, so which is the point? The key feature of this differential privacy is that the uh, privacy is guaranteed in any context without taking into consideration a specific uh, uh, attacker, OK, and a specific knowledge of attack. So if you implement a differential private mechanism, so you can have any kind of attacker. And so the uh, guarantee, uh, the guarantee of privacy is uh, uh, provided. OK, so this is a really different from uh, canonymity and the group based uh, attacks. Why? Because there, the idea is that you have to assume a typical background knowledge of the attacker. And based on this background knowledge, you can perform the data protection. So in this case, with the differential privacy, we removed this requirement to assume a specific attack. OK, so which is uh, our idea. So. Uh, with the uh, introduction, so th that was one day that I was preparing the, uh, the lecture for my students. And uh, uh, when I prepared the, the slides, I included in the slides uh, uh, some, uh, uh, let me say, notion about an, an introduction to autoencoder. Okay. Uh, autoencoder are uh, uh, some, uh, let me say, um, neural network system that are able to compress and uh, decode, uh, decode data. And uh, in the latent space, you on the compressed data, you can do something. OK, so by uh, reading the, let me say, the property, sorry, OK, the property of this autoencoder, I had an idea. But if these autoencoder are able to learn the distribution that you have in the data, we can exploit these uh, autoencoders in order to learn which are the rules for the protection applied by the differential privacy. Because if we are able to learn this pattern of uh, randomization that you apply on the data, maybe we can use this system in order to eliminate the noise added by this data, okay, in order to protect this uh, uh, information. So if you are in this situation, we can use this kind of uh, uh, methods for attacking 
uh, data that are protected by this uh, uh, mechanism, okay? So uh, we started to work with images, okay? So we found these two algorithms uh, that uh, uh, both are able to um, randomize a picture, okay, an image, uh, and this is are two different approach, which is the approach. The, the second one depends on the first one. The first one apply uh, a preliminary pixelization of uh, the images, and then uh, on the, uh, let me say, on the metrics represented uh, by the pixelization uh, um, picture is applied the Laplace uh, uh, noise, okay, is added the Laplace, the, the Laplacian approach add noise given a Laplace distribution to any elements in this case of the matrix, okay, representing this pixelization of the image. Uh, so the second approach is called the differential private uh, blurring, okay, because uh, first run the first algorithm and so apply the Laplacian noise to the matrix after the pixelization, and then perform a Gaussian blurring on the image. So you can see uh, on the um, here that you have, for example, regional four and how four becomes after the differential privacy uh, mitigation. Okay, so. Uh, we uh, tried uh, uh, in this uh, work a different uh, approach for the uh, denoising. And uh, uh, in order to understand if uh, this kind of uh, tools could be useful for, for eliminating. Uh, so the idea is we work on these uh, kind of differential private uh, images and uh, the attack try to reconstruct the original image. If we are able to reconstruct the original image, means that this kind of model are able to learn, which is the randomization path, okay, pattern. So um, this is the entire uh, framework that we are using. So clearly uh, we need uh, the framework, uh, the, the experimental framework that we applied was uh, to start from the original images, uh, applying, uh, which is the uh, mechanism, one of the two mechanisms that I presented before, and then we learned a uh, denoising attack where clearly during the training, uh, we showed to the model the true situation, the original data and the mapping with the um, with the protected data. So this is uh, useful for the attack because uh, typically you have a protection against an attack only in case you are able to avoid the reconstruction of the image, even if the attacker knows which is the algorithm used for uh, applying. This is the worst case scenario. You have to assume that the attacker can know everything, the algorithm, the parameter used for, uh, for uh, making private the data. Okay, so the attacker can apply this framework. So in this framework, learn this denoising attack that is able to find the map between uh, learn, which are the rules that map the original image and the uh, noisy image, okay, differential privacy image, and then apply a process for reconstructing the image. Okay, so what? Uh, uh, which are the, re the 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 model that we used uh, in these uh, uh, in these uh, in this work? What we used is uh, this double uh, unit. Okay, so uh, we used the two units. Uh, combining uh, uh, these uh, two models that is uh, uh, very uh, complex, but uh, each of these uh, two, um, two uh, units um, use a different loss function because the idea is uh, first, the first uh, um, model is able to eliminate and uh, uh, depixelization, okay? And then the second model that instead optimize the structural similarity in the index measure in the loss function, instead is uh, uh, able to work again in the ima image obtained by the previous step of preprocessing for maintaining the similarity in terms of structure of the image, okay? So it's a, a pipeline of units. So in the experiments we, uh, we tested also the use only of the uh, one of these two uh, units with the one of the two, uh, let me say, uh, loss function, but the combination is able to work very well because uh, uh, in two different moments work on two different aspects of the images. Okay, this was the idea. 
So uh, what we add, because in the literature, there were, there were uh, some work that instead tried to uh, do what? So they applied the differential privacy on the, on the data. And then uh, they proved some, uh, uh, I don't remember, maybe may fun at all. They uh, tried to use the, um, the protected images and understand if I'm able to classify also with a CNN, also the protected uh, image without reconstruction. So what we had uh, as a result was that we are able, our reconstruction approach is able also to improve this kind of attack because uh, we eliminate uh, uh, some, uh, uh, some uh, er errors, uh, noise that you have in the data. And moreover, uh, I tested, uh, we tested also the, my initial idea that was to use autoencoder instead of this uh, unit. And uh, uh, the difference is no um, so much, but uh, uh, however, uh, the double unit works very well in this context. We applied this uh, clearly in the benchmarking uh, this uh, means, but, uh, uh, but we also applied this in the reconstruction of uh, faces. So this uh, at and is uh, clearly there. There is uh, more difficulties in uh, uh, reconstructing the, uh, the image, but we have a very, uh, very uh, good result. So the result, if I remember well, uh, is here, for example, uh, here you can see the two steps, for example, for the um, the, the name of the, 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 the first method, the pixelization based method. This is uh, the four after only applying the first unit, and then the second unit is able to refine better uh, the, uh, the elements that you have in the picture. Okay, so um, which is the uh, second use of a machine learning model that we do for uh, uh, always uh, for uh, privacy, for attacking this model and understanding which is the uh, privacy risk. There is another setting where they said that there are some attacks uh, where the most famous is the, mes the membership inference attack that are based on some machine learning models. And these machine learning mo models have the goal to uh, understand by querying a model if a given instance is part of a different set of the classifier that you learned. So which is the idea? You have the training data. The training data uh, are used for learning uh, uh, a machine learning model, okay? And so then when you use this machine learning model, you can have an attacker that by querying uh, the model, is able to understand if, uh, for example, this picture belongs to the trainings. So, so if you are able to do this, so means that you are able to reconstruct all the training set. So, and then you can apply any re-identification attack that you know. So this means that in case the training data is not anonymized, you can put at risk the privacy of individuals represented in the training of the model. So uh, this uh, attack is based on machine learning. So the idea is that the attack model uh, is based on a different step that I have uh, the structure here is better. So typically, the, which is the, the, the idea is assuming that you have uh, some information, statistical information about uh, uh, the training sets uh, used for learning the model, you can construct some models that are called the shadow models. Shadow models could be other machine learning models that by looking at, by querying the, um, the classifier for labeling the synthetic data generated for constructing the attack is able to imitate the uh, black box. So you have some models that only querying the machine learning model are, are able to imitate this model. And so in this case, you can construct training and test for learning a machine learning model that is an attack. So in order to do this, uh, since we have this the training and test data that are synthetic labeled by our, our shadow model in this case, but do you know clearly in this setting now, what is a training and what is a test? 
So we are able to understand and to label each data of the shadow data as an in or out of the training model that we have, okay? So in this case, uh, we also have another possibility. So given the answer of the shadow model on a given record, you have also the, uh, pre um, the uh, confidence vector that give us, which is the probability confidence in um, classifying this kind, of, uh, uh, this kind of records, okay? And so the, uh, this uh, membership inference attack is based on the fact that by analyzing as I input the in or out uh, label, the probability vector, you are able to understand that you can learn on top of this uh, an attacker, an attack that is a machine learning model that is able to understand if a record is a part of the training or if a record is not part of the training because uh, uh, is uh, uh, the in and out label is associated with a given confidence of uh, uh, the model. So if I look at this uh, confidence, I'm able to understand which is the confidence of the model in classifying uh, uh, in record and which is the confidence of uh, a record in classifying the out record, okay? So uh, clearly uh, this attack uh, use a lot of knowledge about uh, the training set because uh, in the literature, there are different experiments that say, if you have statistical uh, information distribution of the original data training data, you can um, produce this uh, attack with success, okay? And uh, so we developed uh, another attack that is always a membership attack, but uh, under a different condition. So we assume that we can not have any information about the training, any information, any statistical information about the training set. So we know which is the structure of the data, but the feature can have any kind of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, distribution. So this means that our data set here, uh, this data set that is uh, synthetic is generated uh, with a random generation, okay, without following any distribution. So, and then instead of using a lot of shadow model that imitate the black box, we use only one shadow model. The mechanism, it's a little different. Again, the shadow model give us the possibility to identify which are the in records and out records. But another assumption, that we do in this context is that we cannot have any access to the probability vector, okay, the confidence vector. So we don't want to exploit this information uh, because there are some uh, contexts where this is impossible to, to reach and to have. And so uh, we um, use the, an idea of another attack that is word uh, label only, that is based on the, uh, also in this context of uh, having access only to the query of the model without the confidence model. And uh, we implemented this robustness score in order to, let me say, infer this confidence of the model in, uh, uh, in learning the, um, the, the in-out uh, uh, in uh, uh, confidence classification. So which is the idea of the uh, score, this uh, score? So you have a record, you can randomize this record and generate some neighborhood. Again, here we are not using any information about the training, so it's a random generation applied feature by feature, and so we are able to create this neighborhood. On top of this neighborhood, clearly we can label with our shadow model the different records that you have for understanding which are the labels obtained, the labeling, labeling obtained by our shadow model. So by uh, observing the different labels, I don't know if uh, it's not so clear, but here you have a true red points uh, with the label red, and the others are blue one, like the, the record, the original record that you have and the, uh, that you said for starting this uh, uh, random generation. So these uh, represent a robustness score. So in case you have, which is the idea, that in case you have a point that is very close to the decision boundary, probably you have some errors by the, uh, the, um, the classifier. Instead, in case you are far away by 
from the decision boundary. In that case, uh, the, the system is very sure in, uh, um, in classifying the elements. So this was an idea of this label only uh, attack that we implemented here. And then, so it means that uh, in this case, for any, any record, we have this robustness score. And the idea is that to apply a thresholding procedure for finding which is the best threshold for separating uh, in and out records based on this score. And uh, this could be used also for the during the attack for understanding if this uh, record is in uh, on uh, or out record. So we applied these uh, methods not only for these uh, both the membership inference attack and this, uh, uh, let me say, this model uh, attack model that he having a very uh, qui um, weak uh, information about uh, the data, okay, uh, because the threat model is completely different. So, in order to also understand if we are able to create um, an assessment method for framework for explainers because we can use this model for attacking a, a given classifier. But the problem is that in explainable AI, you sometimes, uh, the explanation is provided by models that are interpretable and imitating the uh, black box. So you have a global explainer, but we have also local explainer behaving this way, are called surrogate model. And uh, uh, so this is the framework that, uh, this is a result of Francesco, okay? So <laughs> to be honest. So which is the idea? The idea is that you can, um, attack because uh, I need to understand uh, the question is, but introducing uh, an explainer give uh, more privacy risk to the system or the privacy risk is the same, okay, of the black box. If it's the same, means that this uh, explainer from the privacy point of view is fine, okay? But if the privacy risk with exposure of the explainer increase, means that we need to do something, okay? Because in order to provide the transparency, we are creating a new problem with another ethical problem. So the framework is very simple. We attack the black box, we attack the, uh, the explainer, and then we uh, check uh, the performance of the two attacks, and we uh, need to consider which is the gain of the attacker in attacking the explainer or attacking the black box, which is the uh, only one note. When you attack the explainer, you don't want to uh, reconstruct the training data of the explainer that is a, a randomized generated data. But the idea in the attack, we try to reconstruct the training data of the black box, okay? And uh, the, we apply this also for local explainer because in case of global explainer, you have only one model imitating the black box. So you attack the model, you attack the black box, and then you compute the difference. For local explainer, what you have is that uh, a local explainer is able to describe only one portion of the decision boundary, okay? So attacking only one local explainer is not useful because clearly you cannot reconstruct, uh, you cannot reconstruct the entire training set of the black box. And so what we did is to create an ensemble of uh, attacks. So by creating different explainer and then attacking an explainer, and then we um, applied and defined the different procedure for uh, uh, producing the final decision for the attack. So the results are uh, not so good for the global explainer because when we have a global explainer, so attacking, uh, for example, for the global explainer, we use uh, the trepan. If we have trepan, so the uh, risk of privacy increase, okay? And the, probably because for explaining the, not because we tested that uh, by, uh, when we explain a neural network or a random forest or what you want, so we need a very, uh, let me say big, uh, a very detailed uh, trepan is uh, based on uh, tree based model. And so the model of trepan typically goes in overfitting. And the, since the membership inference, inference attack uh, works very well when the model is overfitted. For, for, for producing, the result is for producing very good explanation, 
you need to have a very overfitted uh, explainer. And so these expose uh, the people in the black box training uh, at risk. And you can see that uh, in both cases, there is a gain. Also in case we use a law that uh, uh, reduce the information about the training. Okay, so the fact that to reduce the information of the attacker doesn't change too, too much the situation. So in this case, we also, um, we are working on designing a model, uh, a process that uh, try to balance privacy protection with TREPAN and, uh, and uh, accuracy of the machine, uh, sorry, the explanation model. Concerning the explainer, the situation is a little different. So what you have is that, uh, uh, the, the risk is not so high like uh, for the global explainer. Probably why? Because uh, ne we need to produce different models. So there is a lot of randomization approach uh, between the for the imitation of the model. So it seems that in case we want to attack the local explainer, the attack should be stronger, okay? So uh, this uh, locality uh, produces some, uh, uh, let me say, uh, protection, probably also because it's very hard to cover the entire space where we are working uh, uh, with the black box because uh, uh, you need to apply some strategy. So I, my assumption is that if I'm able to reconstruct and to have a local explainer for all the space that you are analyzing, probably we will have similar results uh, with respect to Trepan. But uh, the current situation with the explainer that we have uh, seems that uh, uh, the, the protection of privacy is very similar to the pro protection. The risk of privacy is very similar to the risk uh, of uh, our black box. So uh, in this way, I, uh, I will conclude the, the lecture. So, uh, so what we saw is that uh, using this kind of denoising, denoising uh, approach for eliminating uh, some uh, uh, noise that uh, are introduced with differential privacy seems promising. Okay, we currently, we work it only on uh, images. Clearly, it will be nice to understand what happens on data uh, and also understand uh, uh, if some uh, of this approach could be also uh, used in the case instead of applying differential privacy on data, we apply differential privacy on the model that uh, the story is uh, different. And uh, moreover, there is an error in the slide. <laughs> moreover, uh, we uh, uh, we worked also in this uh, uh, framework for uh, uh, systematically assess these uh, explainable uh, models. Currently, again, we are working on a tabular setting. We would like to extend the work also on other type of explainer because there are all the explainer working time series on uh, images. And uh, especially the results say that uh, if you want to do something, we need, uh, uh, if you want to explain, we need to consider in the entire pipeline of construction of the model, if there is a privacy risk, because you can have uh, these uh, contrasting behavior. And so we, I concluded, thank you. I don't know if you have a question, I'm happy to answer. Ah, maybe no, yes, maybe no. Uh, no, it's yeah, it's working. Woo. Uh, so I have uh, first, I really like that uh, you make visible women who are working on this thing. So I really enjoy that. <laughs> Good job. Uh, uh, so I have first. I wanted to know if you have taken into consideration the trade-offs between privacy and sustainability, because I think it's a very important thing that we should still add to this uh, work. And then the second thing, I, I'm not so sure how differential privacy works. So to me, like you were adding some gradient, uh, either to some derivatives, whatever. Uh, is there a possibility for the for the protection to be differential for certain uh, populations, for example, for minorities compared to like to to who where these data points lie, 
Okay. That, that's so question. typical differential privacy, I start with, okay, the first question is an interesting question. Uh, so I didn't uh, work until now to sustainability, but this is one uh, uh, in, uh, okay, because in Italy, they are very slow. <laughs> uh, I submitted um, a project proposal uh, one year ago, I didn't receive the, the answer yet. And there, the idea was also to consider uh, in this, uh, my idea is also to consider trade-off be between different values and the sustainability is another value because uh, what you have there is that by protecting, we are also increasing the computation that you need to apply. And uh, so it will be nice to understand uh, also the, trade-off that uh, suppose that you are in a situation where there is uh, privacy of the model, pri explainability, so additional computation, privacy of the explainability, so which, which is the, uh, let me say, the, the, um, the, the, the impact that you have in terms of explainability. So in, in some sense, we address this kind of, uh, without measuring anything, as, uh, sustainability in, in, in the work where Francesca uh, tried to, instead of uh, uh, computing with prudence all the possible computation that you have uh, for the background knowledge of the attacker for uh, measuring the privacy risk, because uh, this framework is exhaustive, but uh, you have to wait for having a number because it's a combinatorial uh, attack, okay? And the, uh, the idea, the Francesca idea was, okay, uh, we can exploit machine learning in a way that uh, we want to avoid that when I arrive another group of record, we need to recompute everything for understanding the risk. And so uh, in the, during her thesis, uh, uh, master thesis, she tried this model, a preliminary approach to this model. And so she had good results and then we constructed the framework. So there, there is uh, something that goes towards this uh, direction, but uh, Honestly, I'm not uh, addressing this aspect that is really interesting. Concerning differential privacy, in this context, uh, in these two models, which is the, the, the differential privacy works adding noise, uh, um, draw from a distribution, a person distribution, a number, and add to the matrix this, uh, uh, to any elements of the matrix this noise. However, uh, in terms of your question, it is interesting because there uh, sometimes uh, there are some studies that uh, study uh, the combination of differential privacy with the, uh, another uh, value that is fairness, okay? And there are some results that try, uh, Luca, for example, is working in the context of uh, uh, distributed learning, federal learning, is working on uh, uh, how differential privacy can help or not uh, the fairness of the model. And uh, this is based especially on this uh, uh, idea that, uh, for example, you can apply uh, different noise for different some categories that you want to protect. So uh, it's an ongoing work, but however, there are already some results in the centralized setting for that. Yeah, I have one. Um, so thank you for the presentation, very interesting topic. Um, I wonder when you publish work like this, um, what kind of special measures you have to take into account? Uh, In which one? <laughs> all of it, actually, because okay. uh, everything that you just presented could be used by malicious actors uh, yeah. to, to perform attacks, essentially, that's uh, the, the basis of your research. So how, how, what special mechanisms or what special precaution you have to take? For the evaluation. Yeah, and when releasing code and when releasing yeah. experiments and giving guidelines, so how much effort you put into uh, identifying the limitations of your own uh, work? Okay, so uh, first in terms of evaluation in this context, I skipped this part, but uh, uh, when you use machine learning uh, models like, um, sorry, attacks based on machine learning models, what you need to look at is, uh, uh, the let me say all the measures that you can derive for a confusion matrix because the idea is the attack is a machine learning model. So the attack as a, as a sex when it is very precise, uh, very uh, have a, a good recall, and so in general a good measure. But in this context, uh, the problem, the, uh, the the measure that is the most important is the recall of the in class because. 
you among all the models, attack models, you need uh, the, the attacker prefer what? The model that is able to reconstruct some more records uh, in the, uh, in the uh, training of the black box, okay? And so the recall measure, this uh, recall of the in-class, okay? So most of the paper, I try to optimize or the recall or the accuracy or the precision given the in class and they look only to the in class with francesca we are not sure that this is the correct approach because uh, by optimizing only the uh, in class then you have uh, uh, for the out class very poor performance so in our experiments we try always to balance in and out but clearly if i need to select i prefer always the in class because uh, this is the problematic uh, a risk that we have because uh, if you uh, if you say that if the model says okay this uh, is uh, in instead of out uh, this is not a big problem but the problem is that uh, for the class in uh, it's really really important to to be precise and also reduce the uh, mis uh, uh, let me say misclassification okay in general, uh, instead for the uh, reconstruction attack, uh, there it's important to evaluate the goodness because uh, uh, it's not only a matter of uh, the performance of the classifier, but uh, there I would like to see if the image reconstructed is very good uh, in terms of uh, a structure. So we use uh, some measure uh, typically for understanding the goodness of the similarities of the, uh, the, the images. But we also um, applied in this paper another um, another thing. Uh, so we take the images uh, that was reconstructed, and uh, we simulated uh, a situation where there is uh, someone that wants to use these images for classification. Okay, and so we compared the result of a CNN model, for example, for a learned on the original images, so image that there is a service, and we try to uh, compare the result in classifying image without images without applying uh, any differential privacy, so original data set, uh, with uh, uh, the situation where the classification is performed on the not trained but performed on the reconstructed data and so this is a way for uh, comparing this is a, pa a pattern of evaluation that come from uh, privacy uh, field because for example when i worked on uh, a data transformation for privacy preserving Typically, what we did was create a strategy for mitigating the risk and then understand which kind of data mining, machine learning algorithm I can apply on the, uh, let me say, the uh, protected data. Because otherwise, if you protect and then you cannot do anything, this is not the goal that we want to reach. So also in this case, we used the same uh, uh, path. I don't know if I answered your question, more or less. <laughs> I don't know if someone in the remote audience wants to make a, a question, but just do it directly from your um, from your side because I'm lost the the connection. The connection between the two. No, no, I'm lost the connection. So my machine is disconnected. Ah, two. okay. Oh, sorry. No, I was understanding the no, no, connection. No, 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 no. Okay. It's myself. Okay. But uh, if someone wants to say something, is now or. Never. Oh, never. Yeah. <laughs> or, or then. <laughs> yeah. I'm able. Okay. Maybe you see the chat. Oh, open the chat. Oh, okay. Sorry. Ah, uh, oh, now seems fine. Okay. Now it was when uh, yeah. uh, the slides was blocked. Yeah. So no one. So, well, thank you very much. Oh, uh, maybe. Oh, yes. There is uh, one, uh, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Last minute. Okay, good stuff. Thank you. The approach seems to be very useful for data that we know from existing database, and to some extent we can trace uh, through explainable source. But what about the rest? Given the ubiquitous computing area, could we apply this approach for a similar one, noise addition techniques uh, in the cloud and mobile computing uh, arena? Okay, very nice question, <laughs> complicated. <laughs> So that's for a thesis. Yeah, this is a PhD thesis. <laughs> 
so but however in the context especially uh okay in my thesis very a few <laughs> too much years ago uh, i also applied uh, uh protection um, applications uh but also um evaluation uh, of privacy risk in the context of uh, clouds where the cloud uh, uh, in that case the cloud services was based only always in uh, uh, uh the service was um data mining based services and the, also in that context uh, uh, we tried to study this problem and the, moreover uh, uh now we have uh, some phd students uh, this is because it's a thesis <laughs> that is working on the context of uh, federal learning and also in that case uh, where uh the assumption is that uh, the data are everywhere and uh, you can have different system that locally can learn uh, some uh, models and then this model could be uh, let me say uh, computed uh, it can collaborate for computing global model also in this context we are trying to study how uh, clearly to guarantee protection at a local and global uh, uh, level uh, not only protection, but in combination with uh, fairness measures, for example, and understand the relationship between them. And also, uh, for example, Francesca now is working on uh, producing uh, explainable AI models in the context of uh, uh, federal learning. Uh, not only Francesca, also Luca is working on that, but uh, uh, with different with a different perspective so yeah we are moving also in the distributed world but again i don't have results some preliminary results but is a i i think that the distributed system uh is the future uh, because uh, there you can do uh something more okay so there is no more questions Very good. So, um, I know that asked for the presentation, is she can use this. Yes. Okay. Uh, 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 and I have the presentation. Nella tua